بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أفضل الأنبياء والمرسلين محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم. Uh, we're continuing uh, for the sake of Tawheed by Sheikh Mahmoud Luthi Amr, Allah Ta'ala. And we have entered into Mabhath Thani, Ta'rifat Batila, Lil Ma'ana Kalima to Tawheed. Okay? Um, the second research or the second chapter or the second study is the false explanations or descriptions of the meaning of Tawheed that some Muslims hold. Alhamdulillah, it's very important to understand this because not everybody that says La ilaha illallah, that none has the right to worship the law, is understanding it correctly. That's part of the problem. And so when you misunderstand La ilaha illallah, you'll find many innovations come about. Many innovations come about. Okay, and this is what we have to be careful of. Many, many, many innovations come about at the source of the innovations are misunderstanding the statement of La ilaha illallah. Okay, so <clears throat> let's begin. So Sheikh Mahmoud Luthi Amr, he begins and he says, Za'ma mawdudiyun nisbatul abi a'ala mawdudi. And this was an Indian uh, scholar who fell into some uh, mistakes in dealing with the issues of Rububiya and Hakamiya and things of that nature. He says, La ilaha illallah huwa la muta'a bi haqqin illallah. So his understanding of La ilaha illallah, that no one is to be bathed in truth except Allah. Okay? Now when you first hear this, you say, well, yeah, we obey Allah. But you have to look into the intent behind the statement and does the legislation back this type of understanding? Does the legislation back does the meaning of light of law mean that only a law is to be obeyed is that how the, the the prophets and the messengers understood this is this how the companions understood this, this statement and we had the class yesterday showing us that when the the, the when the people of the, the pagan arabs who this was their language when they heard the statement la ilaha illallah they did not understand it that only a law could be obeyed they did not understand it that way they understand it that it was negating any divine qualities from anyone other than Allah. And in defect, that means that only Allah could be worshipped. That's how they understood it. We went over that yesterday. He said, so that's the first meaning of people of innovation that fall into the misunderstanding of Allah. And Allah. The second, Za'ma Qutbiyun Nisbatil Sayyid Qutb. The second one is the Qutbiyun, they call his Hizbiyun, or these people who you find them fighting Muslim governments. You find them uh, making protests and revolutions throughout the Muslim world and causing death and destruction. Um, Sayyid Qutb, rahimahullah, may Allah forgive him. He was a person who in the 50s and 60s fought against the Egyptian government and was hung because of it. And the ma'ana la ilaha Allah huwa la haqim ahla haqamiyyata illa Allah. And his understanding of la ilaha Allah said no one can judge in truth but Allah. That no one can be a judge, no one can make any laws, no one can uh, legislate anything except the law. And we don't get into why that's not correct. There's two types of legislation. There's the ruling that is in the Sharia, okay, punishment, laws, family law, that type of thing. And then it's also the law of the universe. It's also uh, the laws of the universe. And these laws of the universe, no one can share with them in Allah. Okay, but we're going to get into that. Okay, and it says, Za'ma ba'du sufiya anna ma'ana la ilaha illallah la khaliqa bihaqa illallah. Now, some of the Sufis from the, from the uh, Turaq al Sufiya, from the different groups of Sufiya, they say that the meaning of la ilaha illallah, that there is no creator but Allah. This is false. They say that when you, as long as someone believes that Allah is the only creator, he's a Muslim. That's false for many ways. The fact that Allah SWT mentioned in the Quran himself that when the pagan Arabs were asked who was the creator, who was the one that brought down the rain, who was the one that uh, gives life to the dead and, uh, and uh, brings the dead from the living from the dead and the dead from the living, they say Allah. 
So the pagan Arabs and the disbelievers affirmed that Allah was the creator, but it still did not make them Muslim. Okay, and we'll get into details why that's incorrect. Now, other groups of Sufi, they say that the meaning of la ilaha illallah, that none, no one is present except Allah, meaning that everything that exists is Allah. That everything that exists is Allah. This is clear falsehood because it goes into the Akira Wahdatu Wujud, that everything is Allah, Allah is everything. Okay, they say everything is Allah and Allah is everything. Okay, we find that today in the five percenters. Okay, we find that in those people who say that the black man is God. Okay, the people who say that you look at the human, the human body, it says arm, leg, leg, arm, head. That spells a law. The human body spells a law. They make all these different things. This is the same thing that the Sufis have fallen into. This is the same thing that the Sufis have fallen into. Okay, now Sheikh Mahmoud al Amr says, and the refutation of these false accusations or these false principles is as I say. He says, La shikka anna ta'ata lahi mutlaqa. He said, without a doubt, that obeying a law is general. Okay, it's mutlaq. Without any limitations. We obey a law without question, right? Well waji ba wuju ben ainiyan and al kudra to istita'a wa hadi ta'a ihda lawazim al ikral bi uluhiya la rubiyatihi ida kayfa yu'minu ad bi ifrad Allah bil ibada tawhiduhu fi rububiyatihi wa tawhiduhu fi uluhiyatihi wa tawhiduhu fi asma'i wa sifati fi waqt nafsuhu la yakru mu'taqidan wujub ta'atillah and the sheikh he says that this is an obligation ainiya okay this is clearly a direct uh obligation uh depending on your ability and your uh, ability to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes you may be in a situation where you can't do a particular wajibat or whatever there's 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 reasons for that in the religion that you know that's a whole other conversation he said this obedience to Allah right this obedience to Allah is from the obligations of Tawheed. When you become a Muslim, now it becomes obligatory to you to what? Pray five times a day. Automatically, Tawheed brings about loazim. Okay? It brings about loazim. It brings about things that are obligatory upon you now inside the religion that are obedience to Allah Azza wa Jal. Okay? So, so when a person has iqrab uluhiyatillah in his rububiyya, the worship of Allah alone, okay, and he affirms that Allah is unique, meaning his rububiyya, and that he's worship alone. So how can a slave believe in the uniqueness of Allah and his worship? Meaning Allah is unique, and from this uniqueness, he deserves to be worshipped. Okay? And his uniqueness and his rububiyya, meaning his actions, are unique. His uniqueness in his divinity, meaning the actual nature of the action itself is divine. And his uniqueness in his names and attributes, which are the descriptions of these divine acts. The description of the divinity comes along with Allah's uh, Asma wa Sifat, gives us descriptions of this divinity, descriptions of these actions. And Allah SWT is unique in all of that. How can a person affirm all of that, but then at the same time doesn't believe that Allah is obligatory to obey him. So that's not the issue. The issue is not the fact that Allah has the right to be obeyed. That's not the issue at all. Okay? He says, Laysa fi dhalika ishkal. Sheikh Mahmoud Luthi Amr says, Laysa fi dhalika ishkal. Innama ishkalu fi man yaz'amu anna man kharaja an an hadhi ta'a kharaj man dayat al-Islam. The problem is, those people who, 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 who say Right, who assume that whoever disobeys Allah or leaves out from Allah's obedience in any in the particular issue, then he leaves out from Islam. That's the problem, and this is the problem that many Muslims fall into. Okay, and really, you'll find extreme Salafis who call themselves Salafis. They are borderline that because they are now taking everybody outside the menhaj, calling them innovators. This is. Borderline. This is the same concept that the Khawarij used to take people outside of Islam. 
You make a mistake, you're not Muslim. You make a mistake, you're not Salafi. It's borderline and it's very dangerous because one leads to the other. Okay? So, بَلْ خَصَصُوا مِنْ هَذِي طَعَةً تَشْرِعَةً أَقَابِيَّةً سِيَاسِيَّةً اِقْتِصَادِيَّةً فَجَعْلُهَا دِينٌ مُقَالَاتُهُمْ وَدَعْوَاتُهُمْ زَعْمُوا أَنَّ ذَلَكَ هُوَ مَعْنَ تَوْهِيهِ He says, and they really pinpoint and they look at <clears throat> from disobedience, the تَشْرِعَةً أَقَابِيَّةً سِيَاسِيَّةً Meaning, these Khawarij groups or these extreme groups or these groups of Takfir and Jihadiyyah they, they say that anyone, any ruler who does not rule by the criminal rules of Islam, meaning how we engage criminals, meaning you cut his hand off if he steals, you stone the adulterer, you beat the fornicator, to the end of it. So if a ruler doesn't leave, he leaves those things off and don't rule by them, then he's considered to have left Islam and committed shirk to them. That's not our menhaj. It's not the manager of Ahlul Sunnah. That's their manhaj. Because our manhaj is that these tashri'at are not from the usul of the religion. They're not tawheed. They're the lawazim of tawheed. They're what becomes obligatory upon you from because of tawheed. And we'll get into that. And they have made these things deen. They have made this the usul. The, the, they have made this the usul, the root of Islam. And their, re, their writings and their cause. And they say, this is Tawheed. Now, what's the problem with that? If you make ruling by Sharia Tawheed by itself, it's the usul of Iman. If somebody leaves up anything, anything from this Sharia, then he's a disbeliever. The funny part is, is that they themselves leave off much of the Sharia by committing innovation. So they should make takfir of themselves in reality. Because they are the first to leave off the Sharia by implementing innovations in Bid'ah. But we don't make takfir on anyone from Ahlul Qibla. This is the manhaj of the Salaf. Wake Salam, Tabarakat. So, uh, in the cup. So, and he goes, he says, Lo ta'amil ashabu had the ta'arif, su'un sani'ihim, wa kilat itraqihim, ma qalu maqalatuhu, idh. يترتب على ما يزعمون أن طاعة الرسول وطاعة الزوج لزوجها وطاعة ولي الأمر وطاعة الابن لأبيه من قبيل الشرك لأن قوم يقول لا مطاع بحق إلا الله right he says if you look at the end result of these people who have this understanding right and what comes from it from their misunderstanding and their little knowledge and their small intellects he says what happens is, is that if you say that only Allah is to be obeyed, right, in truth, then obeying the messenger, the wife obeying her husband, the people obeying their ruler, the son obeying his father will be shirk. Will be shirk. Okay? And he says, because they say that only Allah has the right to be obeyed. That only Allah has the right to be obeyed. And this is total nonsense. Because that means that if you obey somebody in something that may not be in the Sharia, but isn't haram, you have left Islam. If you obey your nafs and you smoke a cigarette, you left Islam, according to these people. So much so I heard people in Egypt, these same individuals who are upon this same aqidah, this khawarij or this takfir or this misunderstanding of light of the law, the kutbiyah, whatever you want to call it. I heard them say that if a person dies smoking a cigarette in the grave, he's going to be asked who's his Lord, he'll say a cigarette. Look what the, this stuff leads to. The extreme. Because they don't understand what an Elah is. They don't understand what a deity is. Linguistically or legislatively. Okay? They don't understand what a man is. Linguistically or legislatively. They don't understand what removes somebody from Islam, what makes somebody a Muslim. As Sheikh Mahmoud uh, Luthiyama, he said, you enter Islam with a belief and you leave Islam with a belief. You don't enter Islam with an action, not of the limbs. You can't just start praying five times a day without saying Shahada and believing that Allah is one and become Muslim. You enter Islam with a belief of the heart, with an aqidah, and you can you leave Islam with the same thing. And this is what we're not understanding. And this is what they don't understand. Because they understand Tawheed. 
He says, in the ta'at Allah huna, he ta'at mutlaka bilaqi or shart. He said, so here, the obedience of Allah means in general without any conditions to it. So when you obey Allah, there's no conditions. Like, I only obey Allah if Allah says this. I only obey Allah if it's like this. I only obey Allah if it's Tuesday or if it's Friday. I only obey Allah in the good. Allah only commands you with good. There is no conditions in the limits to obeying Allah Azza wa Jalla or the Prophet Alayhi Salam for that matter because obeying the Prophet Alayhi Salatu Salam falls underneath obeying Allah Azza wa Jalla. Right? He says... <clears throat> It says, وَطَعَةَ الرَّسُولُ وَطَعَةَ مُطْلَقَ بَلَا قَيْءٍ وَلَا شَرْطٍ ثُمَّ تَأْتِي تَعَةَ مِن دُونِي بِقَيْءٍ أَن تَكُونَ تَعَةَ فِي الْمَعْرُوفِ He says, so now we get into the fact that obeying the messenger is also without any conditions. The only human being, and listen, a lot of us call to Salafiyyah, call to the Sunnah, we know this, this manhaj point, but it's like we forget it. The only human being after the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we can believe without question and without condition and without limit is the Messenger Muhammad Ibn Abdullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that's it not Sheikh so and so not student so and so not Imam so and so not your husband not your wife not your son not your daughter not no ruler no one is to be obeyed without condition Except Allah and His Messenger. Not even the companions can be obeyed without condition and limits. The companions are followed when they have an ijma, when the companions have a, a, a general agreement on the issue and they gather upon this issue being from Islam, then without a shadow of that, we follow without question. But if they themselves, one says this and one says that, and one says this and one says that, not together, then that's not a proof in Islam. You could tell me a, a, a Sahaba said something. I can question you and say, where was his delil? What other, did any other companions disagree with him? I can start to ask questions about that. But if you tell me the Prophet Islam said something from a Sahih Hadith, I can't question it whatsoever. You understand what I'm saying? And this is what we have to understand. So he says, <clears throat> everyone else is obeying the good, meaning the conditional of anyone else. Allah and his messenger. Then after that, everyone else is obeyed if they command you with what is correct. Okay? So me obeying my children. I mean, me giving my children an order. My children now have the right if that order is against Allah and his messenger. A clear text. And it's something that's not from the ma'roof and from the good. They have the right to disobey their father respectfully and advise him and advise me. Right? Because they obey Allah and His Messenger without condition, but not their father without condition. And I'm their father. They have to obey me upon condition. It's conditional. Okay? And that's is from the obligations of Tawheed. So, Bitali, Lokila Bitarifihim, Watodihim, Walil Moksdi, Walil Moksidihim, Mina Ta'ala Kan, Ta'atina Lil Rasul, Lil Lassa Salam Shurkin. He said, from the end result of how they understand the issues of obedience and Tawheed being the same thing, okay? He said, and from what they have clarified in their own speech and in their intent and in their writings and their speech, that all obedience to the Messenger of Allah is shirk. It's shirk. Because he's not Allah. So the fact that he's not a law, he doesn't have the right to be obeyed. If we obey the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu salam, it will fall into worshiping him, according to their understanding of what Tawheed is. And we have to be very careful. So he says, So someone says, Someone says, well, obeying the Messenger is from the obedience of Allah. It goes into the obedience of Allah, meaning... Um, from Allah's right, his rule will be uh, that he sends messengers. And from his right to be worshipped, that you worship him through revelation that he sends to a messenger. So the Prophet Islam will go underneath obeying Allah. Because obeying the messenger, because he doesn't speak from his own desires, is obeying Allah because Allah commanded you in the obedience of the messenger because of the wahi that was sent to him. 
right? So we understand that. So someone will say, well, that would change all of that. So someone says, well, you know, so obeying the messenger of Muhammad is tawheed. Someone called it tawheedu al-tiba'. Tawheedu al-tiba', which I don't agree with that uh, terminology. But some of the scholars do use it. And I respect it because scholars have come up with it from our scholars of Ahlul Sunnah. I respect it. I just don't agree with the terminology. Okay? Because it can be taken in any old kind of way. Personally. But anyway. Um, so anyway. Um, so they're saying that if you say that, then it's no problem. The problem is, is that letter law doesn't mean that. Letter law does not mean. All right. It doesn't mean that a law is only obeyed. It doesn't mean obedience. That's not the meaning of it. Okay. Obedience is an obligation of it, but it is not the meaning of it. The meaning of, of letter law is what? And he says, because the meaning of la ilaha illallah is that it negates divinity from everyone other than Allah and it affirms it for Allah alone. So there are two pillars of light of Allah. One is negation of divinity, and the other is affirmation of divinity. Obedience is nowhere there. The obedience is nowhere in the meaning of light of Allah. It's an obligation of it, but it's not from the meaning of it. It becomes an obligation because of light of Allah, but it's not the meaning of light of Allah. We don't have that anywhere. From any of the salaf, from any of the companions, from any of the messengers, definitely our messenger Muhammad alayhi salatu salam, we don't find the meaning of letter law meaning ta'ah, meaning obedience, from any of the salaf. We only find this with who? The khawarij of past and present. The khawarij of past and present. So, and he says, doesn't matter if it's an angel brought near or a prophet sent as a messenger, right? Or anyone other than them. Right? For ulama anna tafsir tawhid bi tawhid ta'a la yastaqim lughatan aw shar'in. And he says to accept or believe that the tafsir of tawhid, the meaning of this statement is obedience, this does not even have any evidence whatsoever linguistically or legislatively in the religion. Okay? Okay? So so far we understand what? That the meaning of la ilaha law is that there none, none has the right to be worshipped except the law. It does not mean um, that Allah has the right to be obeyed. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that. Because to obey other than the law, if, if, if that was the case, then Adam alayhi salam, let's bring this before we go on to the Qutbiyin. Waikum salam to the If Adam alayhi salam, Iblis, both of them disobeyed Allah. Right? Both of them. But one left Islam because of his disobedience and one didn't. But they both disobeyed Allah. Okay? They both disobeyed Allah Azza wa Jal. One left Islam and one didn't. Why is that? See, this is when you got to start explaining things. The Adam alayhi salam. If la Allah means that none is to be obeyed but Allah, when Adam alayhi salam disobeyed Allah, Following his nafs, right? Like people say, right? He didn't want to lose Jannah. He didn't want to lose what he had. It was something from the dunya, something from the worldly affairs. Then why didn't he leave Islam? Why did he become a kafir? Huh? Because let it all doesn't mean that. He didn't commit shirk. So disobeying Allah couldn't mean, couldn't be shirk because our father Adam would have become a mushrik. Why would be left? But Iblis disobeyed Allah once and became a mushrik, a disbelief. Why is that? Because of the belief behind it. It wasn't just the disobedience. It wasn't just the disobedience. It was what was behind the act itself. The itiqad in his, in his qalb, the belief in his heart. Iblis thought he knew better than Allah. That's kufr. Iblis thought he knew better than Allah. 
Allah was wrong and he was right. That's why he left Islam. The Aqidah, like I said before, Aqidah brings you into Islam and Aqidah can remove you from Islam. Okay? Adam salam didn't have that Aqidah behind his act. He had a misunderstanding behind his act. He was tricked. He didn't attend disbelief in his disobedience of Allah Azza wa Jalla. So how can now let in Allah mean that no one is obeyed other than Allah and our father Adam alayhi salam did an act of disobedience towards Allah and Allah didn't remove him from the deen. See? We guys go in the Quran, we can see the stories. See, these stories ain't just stories. These stories ain't just stories. Okay. Okay? So we know right there, just from that one story, that let in Allah does not mean only Allah is to be obeyed. It doesn't mean that. Allah has commanded the obedience of the Muslim leader in the model, in the good. He has commanded the obedience of, a, of the wife to the husband, the children to the wife, to the mother. Huh? 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 So what are we talking about here? What are we talking about? Allah has commanded obedience to other than himself. Other than himself. SubhanAllah wa hamdi. So he says, Arad al qutbiyin so he basically says the Rad al Qutbiyin, the Hizbiyun of today, those Khawarij uh, who follow behind Sayyid Qutb, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, may Allah SWT have mercy on him. And I know people may look at me crazy when I say that, but I heard scholars do the same thing. I heard Sheikh Ruslan do it, Sheikh Albani, okay, Sheikh uh, Bin Baz. It's okay to say Rahimahullah. The man wasn't a disbeliever. Okay, we're not, when our hearts are not stone, the man died a Muslim. And yes, he had mistakes. Yes, some of the stuff was, it was actually statements of kufr. But they gave him the excuse of ignorance. He was a journalist. He wasn't a scholar. So we give him the excuse of ignorance. And we ask Allah SWT to forgive him and to remove that from Yom Al-Qiyamah that he may not taste the fire. That's what I want for my brother in Islam. Okay? So, so he says, uh, he says to increase upon that, like we said before, right? That the meaning linguistically of the last class, that it means when the Arabs heard it, they understood that it means negating with affirmation, negating divinity, affirming only for Allah. They understood that. This is why when they say you make all the gods one, but they understood it linguistically. Okay, we went over with Sheikh Abdurrahman Waqil said about it and said the things they believed about the Elad when it was said to the, the pagan Arabs, the Arabs of the past, when this word Elad was used, how they understood it linguistically in their heads. What started happening in their heads when they heard the word Elad? It was all about divinity. It was all about certain qualities and attributes that belong to a deity. So we know how they understood it. So the Sheikh is saying that, so the linguistic meaning of Elad does not, right? So, so this meaning of Ilah doesn't go along with this meaning of Hakamir that they have. This means that only Allah can uh, rule. That's it. Right? That anyone who rules by something that's other than what Allah has sent down, this is shirk and removes you from the religion. They basically believe that Hakamir or ruling by Sharia is Tawheed. And not from the Waji Bad Abtoy, even though we understand this from our menhaj, from the Salaf, that it's from the Wazim, from the Waji Bad Abtoy, that the Sharia is not Tawheed itself. I remember Sheikh Mahmoud Uthi Amr, he said, the fact that the Sharia changed from messenger to messenger shows that it's not from the Usul. Because the Usul doesn't change. The trunk of a tree doesn't change. The Akita stayed the same. How do we know the Akita stayed the same? When Pharaoh said, build me a tower so I can look up to the Elah of Musa. That said that Musa told Pharaoh that Allah was above his throne. The Aqidah of the messenger stayed the same. Okay? The Aqidah stayed the same. But the, the, the Teshri'at changed from time to time, place to place, messenger to messenger. How can the trunk of a tree keep changing? How can the Usul change? This is how you know it's not. Okay? And we'll get into some more things about Musa's story, which is going to be great. I don't know if we'll get to it today. But Musa's story blows out 
The fact that anyone who believes that Teshriyata from the Usul and their Tawheed, they're not, they're not the same thing. Tawheed and the Teshriyata are two different things. Tawheed is the Usul, Teshriyata, although from the obligations that the Tawheed brings upon you to implement that Teshriyata. And we'll get into that. Okay? And he says, uh, What خصوما بينه وبين أقوامه في قضية الحكمية والسياسية بل كان خصوما في إقرار بالتوحيد العبادة. He says, and the NBA, all of them, it did not, it was not the argument or the dispute between them and their people and the issue of حكمية and politics. Where? Show me one prophet and messenger خرج على عروشي. Arush, show me one prophet or messenger that, that rebelled against his leaders, protesting and called his people to rise up on him. Show me one. Show me one messenger that went to a leader, to Nimrud, to Firaun, and talked about politics and talked about how bad a ruler he was. Show me. Wallahi, show me. Wallahi. Wallahi. I said, oh, the people are not rulers, they're kings. Dawood was a king. What about when the angel asked the prophet, like, do we want to be a prophet king? And he said, no, I just would rather be a messenger. So uh, Allah commanded a, a prophet, an angel, commanded an angel to go to his messenger and offer something haram to him, kingdom, uh, being a king. So if being a king was haram, that means Allah commanded an angel to go tell the prophet like, to offer him something haram. That's just basically what you're saying. Huh? And we're getting off track. Even though all this is interconnected, right? But, so he says, rather, the dispute was in the establishment of who had the right to be worshipped. The argument and the dispute between the messengers and their people was who was divine alone without partner? Who was divine alone without partner? ثُمَّ خُصُومَ نَادِرَ فِي الْحَكِمِيَةِ or he said that every once in a while, very rarely, you will see them uh, mentioning Allah's right in the universe to rule and judge in the universe or some issue of politics or dunya issue that came about, like measure and weight, okay, being homosexual. Those things came later, down the line. They wasn't the first, they wasn't from the foundational argument. They were branch issues that came about. Later on, okay, he says, which we're talking about the Hilkum Koni, the universal judgment that Allah makes. He decrees his decree, his, his, his decrees in the universe. No one can uh, rule with Allah in that in those particular things. Now, okay, so if we look at the story of Nuh, we'll stop here because. Actually, he brings the whole sore of sore to Noah, the shit does, to prove his point. And like I said, we'll read that, and then we'll stop there, because the next the next story he brings, the story of Ibrahim, then he brings the story of Musa, then he brings the story of Isa, then he brings the uh, the ayats in the Quran about what the Dawah of the Prophet, alayhi salatu salam. He goes through five of these, these messengers, showing their stories, and showing how they intertwined and interacted with their people. Who were ruling by other than what Allah revealed, and how they never mentioned it. If this was from the usul of the religion, how come the prophets and the messengers never brought it up in the beginning of their call? If ruling by another legislation was major shirk, it was a god, then why didn't the messengers mention this right along with them worshiping idols? Because shirk is shirk, right? Now you got to say it's a different type of shirk that exists today. So where's the new messenger? Because if democracy and all these other things that exist are now shirk, akbar, and their gods, and yada, 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 where's the new messenger now to come to clarify this new shirk? So that's something that we're going to ask ourselves. But anyway, he says, If I had a new Mecca that he called me Alpha Sena Illa Khamsin, Ma Valik, kind of, uh, محور دعوة النوح لقومه خلال هذه فطرة طويلة تتخلص في توحيد الله وإخلاص عباده له وقال تعالى في النوح عليه الصلاة والسلام. He said, "No, 
stayed amongst these people for 950 years. And with that, the whole time he was calling them in 950 years, we don't have one ayat in his story, in the hadith or in the Quran, where he mentioned what they were ruling by. We have no idea what was the tashri'at of his people. We don't know the name of the king. We don't know the name of the ruler. We don't know the name of the, I mean, the political system. And we don't have no mention in it at all. So how can now judging uh, only Allah has the right to rule and judge? And if you, and, and that's sure, if you rule other than Allah reveal, how come we don't have 950 years, Nuh alayhi salam, dealing with that issue? Hmm? 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 See, this is why you got to learn the Quran. This is why the people playing games with the deen. They playing games. Okay? And he says, so the whole time, this whole long time, all we see is him talking about a class to Allah some time. Mentioning Allah's right to be worshipped. Mentioning the way. Let's, let's look at this. He says, Inna arsalna nuhan ila qawmihi an anzir qawmaka min qabl an ya'tiyahum adabun alim. He says, and verily we send nuh to his people. And to warn them, right? For it comes to them a severe punishment. Call ya qawmi, inni lakum nadirun mubin. And Nuh said, oh my people, I'm a clear warner for you. And Nibbudullah wa taquhu wa ati'un. Boss, let's go. He says, and worship Allah and fear him and obey me. Obey me. Because Sheikh uh, Muqsim Maluk said that every mess during his time, the statement of Tawheed was, La ilaha illallah, Nuh Rasulullah. The statement of Tawheed was, La ilaha illallah, Nuh Rasulullah. La ilaha illallah, Isa Rasulullah. La ilaha illallah, Musa Rasulullah. That was a statement of Tawheed during their time. And the meaning didn't change. The application didn't change. Ever. SubhanAllah. And look. يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ مِنْ دُنُوبِكُمْ وَيَغْخِرْكُمْ إِلَىٰ أَجْلٍ مُسَمَّةٍ إِنَّ أَجْلَ اللَّهِ إِذَا جَاءَ لَا يُؤَخَّرُ لَوْ كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ And he says, and Allah, he said, يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ مِنْ دُنُوبِكُمْ And he will forgive you of your sins. Of, of your sins. And for a term appointed, Allah will hold back his punishment for a term appointed. And when Allah's when it comes, his term comes, the appointed time comes, no one can stop it from coming if you only knew. Call her up, be in need, to call me Layla wa Nahara. He said, Oh my Lord. And he said, Oh my Lord, I have called my people night and day. Falam yaziduhum, du'a'i illa farara. And my call only increased them in their flight. وَإِنِّي كُلَّمَا دَعَوْتُهُمْ لِتَغْفِرَ لَهُمْ جَعَلُوا أَصَابِعَهُمْ فِي أَذَانِهِمْ وَاسْتَغْشَوْ ثِيَابُهُمْ وَأَسِرُوا وَاسْتَقْبَرُوا اسْتِكْبَارًا And he says, every time he called them to, to, to forgiveness, they would put their fingers in their ear and cover themselves with what they thought. They didn't even want to look at them or hear them. Okay? And they increased in their pride and their haughtiness towards the truth. And he also he called them, he said, I called them openly. And he called them in secret. He said, I called them in secret. I went to somebody's crib, busted up with them in their house, and out in the open in the marketplace, in the streets, I called them. And he says, and I said, uh, seek forgiveness from your Lord. Verily, he is always forgiving. Yet, we haven't heard anything about their politics. We haven't heard anything about what they rule by. We haven't heard anything about, hey, y'all can't rule by that. Okay? If that was from the Usul of Iman and from Tohi, why Nuh in 950 years didn't mention it? He didn't call them away from it? We're not thinking. We're not thinking. يرسل السماء عليكم مدرارا And he will send from the sky upon you abundance of rain. يمددكم بأموال وبنين ويجعل لكم جنات ويجعل لكم أنهارا And he says, and he will strengthen you with wealth and with children. Right? And make for you gardens. I mean, gardens on the dunya. And make for rivers in these gardens. Right? 
through making Toba to Allah Allah will increase you in the dunya. Malakum la tarujuna lillahi wa qara. And why don't you submit to Allah? Have khushur, humility to Allah Azza wa Jal. Why? Wa qada khalakakum atwara. And Allah created you in different forms and levels. From a sperm cell, from a sperm, to a clot of blood, to a the lump of flesh, to a baby in a womb, to a child that comes out. The womb, then to a small child, to a toddler, to a young person, to a teen, to an adult, to an old person, and then you die. Then you go to the Barzakh, you come out the Barzakh, then it's your Mokiyama, general hellfire. Allah, wa khalaqakum al tawara. Allah created you in levels and steps. Again, he's not mentioning Hakami. Again, he's not calling his people to the Teshriyat of Islam. He's not calling his people to leave alone their ruler and their leader and get away from him, yada, yada, yada. And on and on and on. Alam taro kayfa khalakallahu sab'a samawatin tibaqa. And do you not see how Allah created the seven heavens and levels on top of each other? Tibaqa. وَجَعَلَ قَمَرَ فِيهِنَّ نُورًا وَجَعَلَ الشَّمْسَ سِرَاجًا And Allah has made the moon a source of light. And He has made the sun a burning lamp in the sky. Allah, the Nuh is calling these people to Rububiyyah so they can understand has the right to be worshipped. He's calling His people to, to, to look at the divine acts of Allah, His unique acts. 950 years, He didn't waste His time Calling people away from their presidents. Calling away from their kings and their queens. Wasting their time protesting. Wasting their time trying to overthrow the leadership. Wasting their time talking about Trump. Wasting his time talking about this one and that one. Saying, so, so the point is, if the legislations, if the legislations of Allah, if the legislations period was from Tawheed, then Nuh alayhi salam in 950 years did not mention what his people were ruling by. Like I said in this story, we don't know who the king was. We don't know what they were ruling by. So you saying Nuh failed his people because he didn't, he didn't call them away from everything that was shirk. If ruling by other than Allah revealed was shirk and going and, 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 and ruling by what Allah revealed was Tawheed itself, Nuh failed his people. Because he didn't mention it. Okay? This is what I'm trying to get y'all to understand. He didn't mention it. 950 years. We don't know who the king was. We don't know what they were ruling by. Why? Because Allah Azza wa Jal didn't make it important. So why are we? Why are we? I'm not wasting my time with Trump. I'm not wasting my time. We got work to do. May Allah guide him to Islam. The best thing you can do for the people of any land is to make dua for their kings and their rulers. Why? So that he can become better for them. Because if I only had one dua that could be accepted by Allah, I would make it for the ruler. Because his correction is everybody else's correction. His correction is everybody else's correction. And if you make dua and slander, Against this leader, he becomes worse on you. You live here. I don't, I, you know what I mean? I don't get it. Allahu Akbar. So, anyway, <clears throat> let's continue. Wallahu ambetakum min al ardi nabata. And Allah has brought from the earth nabat, fruits and vegetables. Thumma yaidukum fiha wa yukhrijukum ikhraja. And Allah puts you back into that earth and then he takes you out of it again. Meaning, you die, you get buried, and Allah brings you out of the earth again. Yom Al-Qiyam. And Allah has made the earth huh, flat. Meaning, not flat like we think. Not saying the earth isn't round. But when you walk on the earth, it looks flat. Meaning, it's stable. You can walk on it. It's straight. Okay? The earth goes like this. It doesn't go like a ball. Not to us. Okay? Allah made it straight. You can see for miles how straight it is. 
is stable, right? That you can live in it and walk in its paths. Its paths. You can walk around, right? Call a new rabbi innum asoni wa tabu malam yazidu malahu wa waladu illa khasara. And then Noah said, Oh my Lord, my people have disobeyed me and follow one that lam yazidu that his money, his wealth, and his children, and his power only leads him to destruction. Now at this point, if it was important to mention the leader of his people, why did he mention it here? Now he mentioned his characteristics, but how come he ain't mention him? Hmm? 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 That's what I'm saying. This is, this is the question I ask the Khawarij in, 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 in these people. How come they're not mentioning him? Okay? Well, how come Musa alayhi salam, when Pharaoh was drowned, why didn't he go back? If it was about leadership, if it was about, what, uh, it was about uh, legislations and rulings and who leads, why didn't Musa? He was next in line because he was from the family of Pharaoh. He was adopted. Why didn't Musa go back? Why did the Lord tell him to keep going? Hmm? 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 Why did Musa, alayhi salam, when he came down from the mountain, he seen his people making shirk with this calf? With Baal? Hmm? Why didn't the Musa, alayhi salam, threw the Allah? He threw the commandments on the ground. Hmm? Why is that important? And we're gonna finish the story or not. I just why is that important? If the Teshriat was the same as Tawheed, then Musa would have never dropped him. He understood that the Teshriat meant nothing if a people were committing shirk. He understood that. This is why he dropped the Teshriat on the ground. He threw him on the ground out of anger. You gonna say now that Musa alayhi salam left Islam because he put the Teshriat to the side for a second and dealt with the Aqidah of the people? If there was the same thing, he wouldn't have dropped them. If Tawheed and the Teshriat were equal, he would have never dropped them. Then after he corrected their Aqidah, he went and picked up the Teshriat. Musa alayhi salam separated the Teshriat from Tawheed. Hmm? Hmm? See, we don't. You know, we, we're so institutionalized in our understanding of Islam, we don't think. We don't think. The Teshuqah doesn't mean anything if you're upon shirk. Okay, let me ask another question to these people. If the President of America, right, may Allah guide him to Islam, if he started ruling by Sharia in every aspect and never took Shahada, never believed the law was one, and stayed upon his shirk, would the Teshriah matter? Would he get rewarded for implementing the Teshriah? La. La. Because the Teshriah are not Tawheed. Hmm? That's what I'm saying. Hmm? Hmm? Okay. So he says, And they did a serious plot, a large, devious plot against Nuh. And listen to this. And this ayah right here is, is, the, is, is the kicker. This, this, this is the kicker. Check this out. I don't even have to go no more after this ayah. But I ain't. I don't have to say nothing else. It says, And they said, this means that they really were serious about hey man, don't leave your gods. Hold up, homie. They were serious about it. this noon toki means they was like really, 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 really digging in. Okay? They said, do not leave your gods. Now, we all understand what the word Elam in the last class. We understand how the Arabs meant it linguistically. It meant something divine, something they deemed to be divine. Okay, we understand what that means. Then Allah clarified what he meant by Elah here. When he said, do not leave off what the He was the five righteous men who died 
before Nuh salam, was born and his people fell into worshiping them. We go back to the story of Ibn Abbas where he explains how shirk came about in the human race. It was from the people of Nuh worshiping these five men. But the thing I'm trying to show is how come when they said, do not leave your gods. And they, they named the gods. That means Nuh salam, died, was away from these idols. Why didn't they say, don't leave your legislation? Don't leave your king. Don't leave your government. Don't leave what we're ruling by. How come that wasn't mentioned as a god? Hmm? Hmm? Now my question to ask the Khawaj, anybody, hmm? I'm, I'm only coming from the Quran. Speech of my Lord. Where is it in this ayat? If Nuh was calling against their government and calling against their legislation as being the shirk and a god, how come the people, when they said to their people, do not leave your gods, they did not mention their king, their government, or what they were ruling by as a god? Hmm? Hmm? But we don't, we don't, we don't stop and ask questions. And some Salafi scholars say that democracy is a god and this, that, and the third. They do. I've, I've, I've read where scholars from amongst the Ahlul Sunnah have said, if you vote, you make a deity out of Congress. Congress becomes your God. These are extreme statements that are not true. Hmm? Because the Ummah got away from this basic understanding. That's why. So he says, And they have misled many. These people call into these idols, turn out to lead the idols. And it only increased them. The, 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 the wrongly oppressors who commit shirk are only a far stray. And so, from their mistake, from what they have done, we drown them, enter them to the fire. And they did not find, they will not find other than Allah as a helper and a protector against this punishment. They, they, their gods can't help them now. It's over. They, matter of fact, the stones in the hellfire will be the idols that the people worship. So they're going to be in there with them. Okay? So no, after the call, after he, he 950 years of, of da'wah to these people, calling them, they turned around and they fought them. Laughed at them building a boat. Hmm? So he says that my people, though Allah SWT made the du'a, the Prophet SWT made the, I mean, Nuh made the du'a, and he says that they have do not leave one kafir on the earth. This is the sort of permissibility of making dua against the kufa. This, this, this ayah. Okay? In general. Okay? Then he mentions, he said, Indica, if you leave these disbelievers on the earth, they will give birth to other disbelievers who will lead your people astray. That was his, his reasoning for making dua against them. And he says, Oh Allah, forgive me and my parents and those who come into my house as believers who follow me from the believing men and women. And the, the oppressor is only increased in his wrongdoing. Okay? And the Sheikh Mahmoud Luthi Amr, he ends and says, فَهَذَا زَمْنُ الطَّوِيلِ he said, for in this long period of time that went over 950 years, ain't a doubt to Hakimiyafi. Where was the call that only Allah had the right to rule? And that their legislation or politics or their king was a god and it was shirk. Because he didn't call, he didn't mention it as their god. Because the Kufar responded that. that Stick to your gods, and they mention their gods, and their politics, and their king, and their uh, legislation was not mentioned. So that means that Nuh Islam did not make his dawah to that. He did not make his dawah because if that stuff was shirk, a messenger would not have left it off. Because you gotta say they failed their people if they did. They did not finish their job. Hmm. So he says. 
فأما أن يكون أصحاب حكمية أفقهوا أو أعلم من الأنبياء وأما أنهم جعلوا منهج الأنبياء فأحدثوا في مفاهيم دينية ما ليس منها He said is it that the people who call to this hakamiya who call to these rebellions and call to legislation being from the foundations of Iman and being Tawheed do they know better than the NBA? They know better than Nuh, than Musa, than Isa, than Muhammad Islam, than Ibrahim, than Saleh, than Hud. Do they? Huh? Or are they ignorant of the manager of the NBA? Are they ignorant and are now innovated in the understanding of the religion? Which one is it? Either the NBA were ignorant or these people are ignorant. Which one is it? Either the NBA failed in their job or these people know better than the NBA. Either these people innovated in the religion and the NBA are correct. We got to ask ourselves. We got to ask ourselves. So we'll stop there, inshallah ta'ala, because the next story I will bring will be the story of Ibrahim. I will go through each ayat because we only bring ayats from the Quran. That's it. Each ayat showing the story of Ibrahim and how his call did not call. He got in front of Nimrud, Nimrod, and he didn't call to politics and siyasa. Hmm? Hmm? He only dealt with Nimrod's Aqidah. He never mentioned what Nimrud was ruling by. And he was in front of him. He lived in his land. He clearly understood what he was ruling by. The Prophet Islam did too. He never mentioned the rule of his people, what they were ruling by. We don't even know what the apostles of the Arabs were. We don't even know what they called it. Think about that. Think about the fact that we don't know through the Prophet Islam himself what the, the Romans ruled by, the Persians ruled by. We don't have any eye on it, any hadith. We know through history books what may, what they ruled by, like democracy and some form of that, yada, yada, yada. Right? But we don't know the Messenger himself did not mention the legislation of these people. And it's not an eye in the Quran that mentions it. On the names, think about this. Show me one eye that mentions the names of the rulers that was around on the time of the Prophet. One eye in the Quran. And, and they're what they rule by, the name of their government, their politics. One, show me. Show me. SubhanAllah Bahamdi. SubhanAllah Bahamdi. The Sahaba got in front of Najashi. Why didn't they call him away from his so called what he ruled by if it was Shirk? The, the messenger that the Sahaba would have gave him advice that this was shirk. The only thing they talked to him about was the identity of Isa alayhi salam. To call him away from his misunderstanding of who Isa was. And they didn't call, they get any political group in his land while they were there. They didn't protest. They didn't call his people against him. Show me. Hmm. 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 That's all I'm saying. So, inshallah ta'ala, that would be that. We would do the story of Ibrahim. Then it will be the story of uh, Yusuf alayhi salam. Then the story of Musa. Then the story of Isa. Then the story of Muhammad alayhi sallallahu alayhi sallam. And I will show you each story how the call of the NBA was not Hakamiya. It was not that legislations were Tawheed, that they were the obligations of Tawheed, that they were not Tawheed itself. And this is the manager of Ahl Sunnah. This is the manager of the NBA and the Rusul. And this is the NBA. this is our manager of the Sahaba. In the tabi at the tabi'in, this is the manager of the four imams, this is the manager of the imma to sunnah from then to now. Sheikh Wufaymin, Sheikh Bin Bas, Sheikh Albani, Sheikh Muqsin al Alba, Sheikh Al Hudiyan, Sheikh Al Hud Al 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 Um Sheikh Salif Ozan, Sheikh Sa'id Vislan, Sheikh Hassan Al Bani, Sheikh Mahmoud Am, Sheikh Talat Zahra, to the end of it. Our scholars of the Sunnah today are on the same manage that the first of the NB, NBI were Adam alayhi salatu So may Allah forgive me. Anything I said wrong today was from me and the shaitan. Anything I said that was correct is from Allah. I, I thank all of you for being here today. And I hope you benefit. I know I get a little hype. That's just how I am, my personality. I know I get a little fired up, mashallah. But I get fired up about things like this because we got to get back to the basics of understanding our people and stop just going off terminology. Stop just going on what somebody said. We got to get down to the nitty gritty and get back to the organic form of Islam. And may Allah forgive us all. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.